What I'm going to be brief about is at Superu we've developed a family and whānau work program. And to this point, those are the publications that have come out in that space. But what I'm talking to you today about is this publication. It's on the, on the tables at the back. It's also on your USB sticks. And it's about the work that went into developing the whānau stream of work, which is based on the Fano Rangatiratanga conceptual and measurement frameworks. Now, clearly, we've actually, I can, I can keep my speech really short because we've already had the foundation this morning, and I'm very, very grateful to hear that kōrero again. It was just wonderful to hear those speakers this morning, and uh, we're all here today because of those speakers. And clearly, when we had to look at how do we do things like measure Fano Rangatiratanga, Fano well-being a whole lot of work had already been done by Fetu through Statistics New Zealand. So we were very fortunate. We were able to stand on a very, very solid qualitative work program, but also the work that Fetu had developed through Stats New Zealand in developing the Māori Stats framework. So what we had to look at doing was how did we go ahead and build on the work that had already been done. We did encounter a number of conceptual challenges and a number of measurement challenges in developing the framework. And I know some of those have already been raised very well this morning, so I can be brief on those. But basically, when Fetu talked about and then have talked about the time, this was a context for looking at measuring whānau. So what we have, as you heard this morning, is data and statistics told about Māori that don't actually include Māori, I think when I was looking at this section, I was very interested when I came upon Ian Paul's description of the, the fractions. He talked about it as a blood quantum. And to me, that sounded like a Jack Richer novel. So when you come across here and you look at all the building up, you've got the Māori Affairs Amendment Act, which then brought in that Māori was not defined by blood quantum. We've got a whole lot of changes in the census, political and social changes around the census the Māori Statistics Framework, and of course it goes up to De Kupinga, which you're going to hear more about this afternoon. So that was really the context that we had to think about. What are the, what are the conceptual and measurement challenges when you're looking at whānau wellbeing? Well, we had to have a look at what these are. And the other good thing about the work that we had done is the whānau ranga tiratanga work stream that our colleague Cathy Irwin had run had looked at a whole lot of things around what is whānau ranga tiratanga. So there was already work there that the key speakers had done from this morning going back decades to talk about what it is that whānau want. When Fetu talked, she talked about looking at the, the minutes or the proceedings of the hui taumata and pulling all that stuff together. So it was actually already there, but what we had to think about was what does this mean from measurement perspective? And that was one of the first challenges we looked at. What are the significant gaps between where whānau want to be and the data that's available? And when we started developing the framework, it was really frustrating because the data only allows us to tell a certain story. It doesn't allow us to tell the story of where we want to go. So that's a significant challenge going forward, is to create the data and the evidence to do that. And how do we develop meaningful measures of whānau wellbeing? And who are we looking at when we talk about whānau? And that is an all, a corridor all you're going to hear about this afternoon from Tahu Kuku time. And what is it that whānau see as outcomes of wellbeing? So when we started going through how are we going to look at whānau, clearly there's a whole lot of work around what is whānau, there's a whole lot of work around what is wellbeing, and there's a whole lot of work around how we measure that. And that's an ongoing piece of work, because at the end of the day, for a framework to be relevant, it has to be used not just by the Crown, but also by whānau, hapū and iwi. And that's a very interesting photo. What data can provide measures of these indicators? So the photos are telling us a story about whānau, but the data isn't necessarily marry marrying that story. You see our problem. And it hasn't got any easier since Fetu was working in the area. So one of the key things that we've looked at doing 
as we developed the Whānau Ranga Tiratanga frameworks. The term Whānau Ranga Tiratanga did come from our previous work. Uh, Dr Cathy Irwin is speaking this afternoon. She was responsible when she was working at the Families Commission for pulling together the Whānau Ranga Tiratanga work program along with significant members of the Whānau Reference Group and other key people working with us. So those are the sorts of things that we needed to look at. And why is a framework so important? Well, from our perspective, if we don't have a framework to build a structure in the space to tell the whānau story, then what do we have? We have numbers. And numbers without a way, without a guideline to decide how they get measured, decide what numbers, decide the priorities, and very importantly, decide how they're analysed, certainly become meaningless without a framework. So we drew on the work that was already done to develop our whānau ranga tiratanga conceptual framework. The point of that diagram is to show that, as we heard this morning from the other speakers, whatever happens in the space has to be informed by Tao Māori. So the key principles that were identified through the development of the whānau ranga tiratanga work programme were these principles. Whakapapa, wairua tanga, kotahi tanga, ranga tiratanga and manaki tanga. And of course we drew on, and you're going to hear from James after me, but we really got excited when we looked at the Independent Māori Statutory Board's framework because they had principles along the top. So we thought that was really important, that we had the principles along the top and we had the capability dimensions drawn from the Māori Stats framework down the side and from our point of view the lens was whānau. So a key point of that you're going to hear from, from Andrew, but it is so important not to lose how that data is considered. For, I think a good example is, you know, we, we, if we increase the number of whānau into state housing, well, we, you know, we've increased affordable housing for Māori. Yes, surely that is a very good outcome. But if we take a step back, is that really a good outcome for whānau? So the frameworks give us another way of thinking about what data do whānau need. And it also challenges all of us working in that space to think about what sort of data is collected and how it's collected. And you'll probably hear more from Liz McPherson this afternoon. So on that note, I said I could be brief. The key takeaway, well the key takeaway is, even though we're talking statistics, we can certainly frame that from a Mātauranga Māori perspective. The work is an ongoing piece of work. There is no framework to rule them all, that's the other thing. But I think the important information, when you're going to hear from our colleagues later on, is the frameworks that are working in the Te Ao Māori space are framed within Te Ao Māori, they will easily talk to each other. We've all got the same principles. They are very easy to talk to each other. So it isn't about having one framework that rules. It's how do the frameworks engage with each other and support the work that's going on in that space. Kia ora.